Picture this. It's 2006, and you're the proud new owner of a PlayStation 3. You take it home, plug it in, connect to the Wi-Fi you're stealing from your neighbor, and hop onto the PlayStation Network for the first time. To your surprise, you're asked to create an account with Sony and pick a username. You scratch your head for a few seconds, then type in dongfondle42. You chuckle at your own genius, hit enter, and carry on with your gaming life. For the next year or so, Dong Fondle 42 enjoys playing PlayStation 3 games without a hitch. But as time goes on, that brilliant username starts to wear a bit thin. Kids in Call of Duty lobbies laugh at you, your girlfriend thinks you're childish, and your grandma, well, she just doesn't get the joke at all. So what's a gamer to do? One day you decide it's time to grow up and change your username. You log into the PlayStation Network, search for the option to change your name, but nothing. You scour the internet, probably using Yahoo or whatever, and find everyone else is asking the same question, and no one has any answers. Desperate, you contact Sony's technical support, only to be told the unthinkable. You can't change your username. If you want a new one, you have to create a whole new PlayStation Network account. But here's the kicker. All of your purchases, game saves and trophies and all that kind of crap, are tied to that account. Creating a new account would mean losing access to everything. So like it or not, you're Dong Fondle 42 and you're going to stay that way. But why? Why did Sony make it so hard to change a username when services like Xbox Live and Steam let you do it whenever you wanted? The reason is a lot dumber than you'd probably expect. Before I get started here, I just want to point out that I do not work for Sony and I wasn't involved in the development of the PlayStation Network, so all of this is just kind of an educated guess based on my knowledge of how databasing works. Alright, clear? Well, here we go. Let's get into some basics first. Computers store data in a way that's easy to read, organize, and access, a process called databasing. In modern systems, databases are structured around a series of linked tables. For example, your credit card information would be stored on one table while your trophies will be stored on another. This keeps things organized and easy to manage. All of these tables are connected through something called a unique identifier or UID for short. The UID is a value which uniquely identifies your account across all of the tables. When you search for a user's data, the system uses this UID to pull information from all of the linked tables. So far, so good. This is actually a standard practice in database design. But here's where Sony's problem comes in. How they designed that UID. If I were designing the PSN, I'd make the UID a randomly generated alphanumeric value that the user never actually sees. In other systems, like your bank account, the UID would likely be your bank account number. For medical records, it may be your social security number. But what did Sony decide to use as a UID for the PlayStation Network? Your username. That's right. When Dong Fondle 42 created his PSN account, his UID became Dong Fondle 42, and because of that, it couldn't be changed. Technically, it's possible to change a UID, but doing so can create a cascade of problems. Remember, every piece of data across all of the tables is accessed by this UID. So if you change Dong Fondle 42 to something else in the main table, it doesn't automatically update all of the other tables. Remember, the PSN would lose access to data in those other tables because they are still looking for Dong Fondle 42. Even if you went through and updated every table to reflect the new username, that still wouldn't solve all of the problems. The PSN account is linked to other services outside of Sony's control. For example, when Ubisoft created Assassin's Creed and created an app for it, that linked to the PlayStation Network. It expected to find Dong Fondle 42. Sony couldn't change what was stored in the Ubisoft servers. On top of that, purchases and save files stored on your PlayStation 3 hard drives were also tied to the PlayStation Network username. Changing the username could break a lot of things, both on Sony's end and on your own console. Microsoft and Steam, on the other hand, took a more sensible approach. They kept the username and UID as separate fields. 
This allowed users to change their usernames without messing up the entire system. Simple, smart, and efficient, and not dumbass. Sony eventually allowed users to change their usernames, but it took years. This change wasn't due to some incredible engineering feat, it was just a result of a policy shift on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Sony told developers to stop using the UID as a username and created a separate field specifically for the username. Unfortunately, there is a catch. This creates an uneven experience for users. On the PlayStation 3, even if Dong Fondle 42 changed his name to Nice Boy 111, you still see Dong Fondle 42. The old structure is too deeply ingrained in the PlayStation 3 system. Some early PS4 games also have the same issue because it's just too much to ask developers to go back and patch old titles. So now you understand the problem, but is it understandable? Not really. This was a fundamental database flaw that Sony had no excuse for. Even if Sony never intended to allow users to change their usernames, they still shouldn't have used the username as the UID. Best practices in database design tell us this is a bad idea. If I had been on the PlayStation Network development team, blood would have poured from my eyes before I let the PSN go live with a flaw like that. So what about you? What do you think? Was Sony being a bunch of dumbasses with the PlayStation Network username controversy? Or was it an understandable mistake? Be careful, there's only one right answer here. Share your comments.